Uh, good morning or uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this class. Uh, uh, the discuss, we're going to discuss uh, module two in course two, title issues on business growth. As you can see, my name. Um, so I'm going to take you through this model and the model is about how people are going to grow their business. You can remember in module one, there are a lot of discussions on, and by maybe uh, especially in course one, to this the expectation of this uh, program that uh, when you're through with uh, module one, you're going to, you have some ideas, you started building some ideas, initiating new ways of starting your business. So it is under this assumption that this module is built so that it will expose you, show you rather, ways to grow your business. Uh, as you are aware, you can find a lot of uh, experiences, you know, a lot of people start a business and the business collapses uh, within six months. So this is a serious issue. If you look around you, people are starting business today, tomorrow, and next tomorrow the shop is closed or the business is sh shut down. So the, we, uh, through this model, we're going to understand a lot of this uh, why businesses are closing down uh, if they are about to close down what should they do to continue to expand the business what are the ways to grow your business and what are the strategies uh, to adapt in order to grow your business and we're going to look at you know types of growth internal and external growth or organic and inorganic growth so as you 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 wait or you listen to this lecture you're going to uh, find those discussions uh, as you move further so uh, i'm taking you through this and be patient so that we can take you through issues on business growth as the title says uh, there are ma uh, millions of issues there are a lot of issues when it comes to growing a business you can remember when we were kids, uh, before we grew to this current age, a lot, our parents survived a lot because of a lot of troubles that we caused to them. Uh, is it breaking the plates, smashing the TV screen, uh, breaking the plate, breaking the, 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 the tumbler, drawing down the curtains and all of those challenges. Oh, those are issues that has, uh, even in human beings, before they grow, uh, they must have encountered or experienced some hitches in one way or the other. Type of sickness, uh, malaria will come, your mother cannot sleep. So all these are the challenges of growing a business. So uh, in, in, this, in this slide, uh, we're going to see why is it that more than half of most businesses fell in, in less than two years of commencement. So this is a question, and, and, and this is a question that is every day asked by many experts in this field. And there are a lot of answers to this. Uh, a lot of businesses close down because uh, some of them, there are no innovations. We tend to do similar business that uh, everybody is doing. For example, uh, Indomie Sport, Indomie Joint, uh, you can count uh, on one street, uh, say 20 Indomie Joints or 10. So uh, everybody, if you open the type of business and people are seeing you making it and everybody want to enter the same business and, and, and that's the challenge and maybe and perhaps it's one of the answer to, this, to that questions. Why is it, that, is it that more than half of most businesses fail in less than two years of commencement? Some of them don't even see the light of two years. Some of just six months they are gone down. Some of them three, some of them two, three, four weeks, they are gone down. So some of the reasons, another reason is that they don't have passion for the business. They don't have any, they just start because somebody else is doing it. Some out of envy, uh, you start a business, they just venture into. And this type of people, we call them bandwagon. They just want to do because they see you succeeding and they don't know why you are succeeding and how you are succeeding. And they just venture. So you put in your money and, and you, are, you might be on your own because uh, you don't know what, where to go next. You open the shop, you don't know where to seek for customers, you don't know how to talk to customers. This is a serious challenge. 
So a larger number of those businesses that survived in the first two years had let go. Why? So if you look around us you know, in our society, you're going to see a lot of businesses that have started and they are growing. And then they did survive for more than two years, yet they are not growing. How do I mean by this? So it means that these businesses are operating and they are where they are, they're static and they cannot grow. Just imagine, I, I watched a video uh, recently and, and a child has some, some deficiency, in growth deficiency, and that child will not grow. It will remain as if it's two years old or up to, four, up to the aging years of our life or his life. His life. You see him very tiny. His hands are not growing. His clothes very small as if he's just two years old. But when you check his age, he's over 50 years. I saw the video, very interesting. So what happened? There are a lot of challenges. Uh, you might be alive, but you, there are certain things you cannot achieve. You cannot do so many things. That type of tiny individual you cannot do any, anything. We're not blaming him, and that is nature. But in business, in the case of business, if you start a business and, and you remain as where you are, everybody will come and overtake you. It means that all the customers you are able to garner over the years, somebody will take them over within a day because you don't innovate and because you don't know how to grow the business. So this few, uh, some of the answers, and, and there are a lot of more. So I, I will encourage you to deep, deep, deep in inside to try to find out more of those answers to these uh, reasons why businesses collapse within it is two years, some even less than one month, some less than two months, some even less than majority less than six months. And this is a trend and it's quite disturbing. Yeah. Uh, the issues continue. So it, is it because we ascribe business success or failure to luck or certain environmental conditions, including family background? This is another question. A lot of businesses collapse simply because they are heroes. I mean, and those who created the business, for example, a family business, your father is doing wonderfully in the market and now he's sick and, 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 and you will not be able to continue the business. And sometimes it depends on luck. You don't do anything and you wait for the luck to come. And like we always say, luck is not a strategy. Uh, it's better to do something and then pray for luck because luck might not always turn on your side. There are other people that the luck will fall on, on their part. So not doing anything and just waiting for luck, uh, it might not necessarily help. You have to move, you have to act and do something. And some people used to celebrate uh, past glories, you know, family background because their name is uh, Antatas and, and their, their family name is Antata, for example, or Dangote or, or Tedola or, and the rest of them. And, and they, they so much relax and feel that that name could, will take them to the next level, which is not obtainable in today's world. That is highly competitive, where customers are changing needs, are, and new needs are emerging. Technology is taking over everywhere. So uh, one needs to do more and don't just wait for your luck because you, your father was you're doing fine and you think that the business success will transcend into you. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. And what work is, what value are you offering to the customer and what unique feature are you selling? So a lot of people blame the situation, blame the environment, blame everybody for not succeeding or not growing their business. So the next one is, it is only a few businesses that survive, grow, regenerate, and even create other businesses. Are they using magic? No, they are not using magic. They are human beings like us. And what they do, they do some certain things differently. What do I mean? They, they normally come out of their comfort zone to do certain things in, in order to make their business grow. If you look around you, there are businesses that have been existing for the past you know, 20, 30 years. Nothing happened to them. They kept on expanding, opening branches everywhere, increasing product line and whatnot. But some, uh, you cannot remember their name. There are a lot of businesses that we can't remember today. They are gone. But there are a few ones that just come on board and they're doing wonderfully. So they're not using magic. They're using their brains. They're using knowledge. They're using whatever it takes to, for, for them to grow their business. So don't just fold your arms as a business person and think, uh, yeah, it's natural. Like humans, you're going to grow. 
No, no, no. He, uh, business doesn't grow like that. You have to do more. You have to increase marketing. You have to do so many. You have to build a relationship with customers. You have to make them happy so that they can come tomorrow. And you have to find a way to compete, uh, to defeat your competitors in the market. No business that has no rival. Even if it doesn't have today, tomorrow is going to have one. So don't just fold your arms and feel that you are alone. You are never alone. In as much as the name is business, somebody will try to do the same. But fundamentally, uh, what really, really, you know, empire and society was really blocking people from growing their business is lack of innovation. And and people don't innovate, and, and and the world is changing. Everything is dynamic, and if you don't follow the change, follow the trend of change, then you will be lagging behind. So the most important thing is to watch your angle, the environment, the customers, the everything from within and without your company. You need to understand the situation. So these are some of the few reasons why businesses cannot grow. And what is business growth? We've been talking about issues on business growth and now I want to understand uh, what, it, what does it mean to grow a business. So business growth is the expansion of firms, products, service or target market or some combination of each. What do I mean by that? So business growth is the expansion, meaning you are doing, uh, you're producing 20 products per day, 20 units per day, and now you start producing 50 units per day expansion from within. And this is a typical expansion from within. So you are producing more products instead of the 20 before, now you're producing 50. Later, tomorrow you start producing 100. It means the business is expanding. And not just producing and keeping them in the store, uh, but producing and selling. So in terms of services as well, you can increase, you know, more services. For example, a hospital who, who that, op that start operation just yesterday with just uh, maternity and uh, later on it introduces, say, uh, uh, dentist, dentist department introduces, you know, uh, older departments in the, in, in the, in the, in the uh, hospital business, for example surgery and the rest of them it started with maternity alone and now it can admit patients it can treat uh, uh, two uh, issues dentist issues it can treat so many other elements uh, starting with uh, uh, maternity now it has from grace it has progressed to cover so many that's a typical expansion of service a mechanic workshop for example that opens the shop and now he fixes people's car and later he realized, okay, the, there's need, he used to go, he fixes only Toyota car. And now he wants to expand to start fixing Golf, Opel, Mercedes-Benz, and Honda. So that's an expansion of service. Or target market. For example, that mechanic that used to uh, only service, you know, lecturer's car, uh, might decide to start, you know, servicing polytechnic lecturers, not only university. That's a typical, you know, business growing the business. So now, he was, he, before he was only doing the service, offering the service for university lecturers, now he's gone beyond that. He's moving to polytechnic and colleges of education. So, and then sometimes the combination of all, you expand the product line, you open more branches, and you reach out to more new markets. That's business growth. It is a movement from small to a large enterprise. From small to a large enterprise. From the picture, uh, business growth, you're going to see plants growing. The first one is, is tiny, is moving to the next and up to the fifth one. And the fifth one is the tallest amount. It means the, the plants are growing. So the same with business. From small to a large enterprise. From employing 20 people to employing 100 people from selling only one product to selling 20 types of products expansion so most ventures start small due to limited knowledge of the market shortage of capital lack of skill employees etc so a lot of businesses that you've seen in this world they most they've started small businesses and over time they, they were able to grow to larger companies Example of such uh, businesses, we've seen a lot of smaller businesses that are moving up now. Uh, 
in this country we, we've seen uh, companies uh, I, I want to get a typical example of if I, if I, if I remember I'm, I'm going to come back you know to this example so the company there are a lot of small companies uh, uh, for example Rufaida yogurt in, in Kano uh, it started just few stores and now is everywhere Habib yogurt started a few stores and now is everywhere it's growing yeah, Uza Suya started like a yeah, small store, a yeah, more Suya sport, and now it's everywhere. And a lot of them, yeah. Recently, we've seen uh, Chicken Republic just starting with few branches, and, and now it's almost everywhere in Kano. And you can find them, you start finding them in other no northern states. ShopRite, uh, we don't want to say ShopRite started small, but uh, it started in Lagos, and now it's in Abuja. It's in Kano and it's about to open in Kaduna. So these are uh, businesses, but even though ShopRite is not really, it's not small, but there are a lot of you know other small businesses that started uh, with little and now they are. And sometimes it's tactical to start small, considering the issues of capital. And uh, I know a lot of you, if we should ask students to start their business, what uh, I could remember, I asked some students and. Like how much would you need to start a small business? Somebody is telling me it was. He told me somebody was saying ten million. Naira. You can imagine. You want. To, you've never been into any business, and you want to start it with ten million naira as a student. Who is going to give you that money? So you need to start small. So lack of skill, employees. Sometimes companies will come and want to start their business, but they they wouldn't want to dwell into the market without you know experienced hires. So and then they will start you know looking at uh, competitors and, and 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 getting some of their experience hands and and then before then and then the company will, go, will start begin to expand. This grows for a, a number of reasons. A lot of uh, businesses grow for some a lot of uh, a number of especially small business. Some small businesses grow uh, with a desire to make money and enjoy life. A lot of us, and I'm sure a lot of students, if they should get the money, uh, the business uh, going, they will always want to enjoy their life as young people. Even the old people, uh, 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 when it comes to life enjoyment, no age, no age barrier. So some people, you know, they, they grow their business with the desire to improve social status and well-being. Not only making money and enjoy life, but social status. You'll be known everywhere, you become a small celebrity because of your success in business. We've seen a lot of people here making names, we don't know them before because they are successful in their businesses and they're becoming popular. We've seen, you know, uh, 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 s small businesses that, that have started and because they are growing and their name is become popular. Uh, one one guy in Kano, for example, Samani Fatu, you know, who is into this type of business, uh, women belts and underwears, and now is there is moving places. So some people go into business, you know, to take advantage of. Uh, they want to grow their business to take advantage of a gap in the marketplace. What do I mean by the gap? A gap is where there's something. Some, for example, you are producing, say, uh, pure water, saturated water, and you realize in the market. Uh, Especially the elite society, the elite uh, uh, members of the society, uh, they don't, they are not buying into pure such a water, and and then and then nobody is providing that water, and then you just venture into to start to to uh, to import machines that will start producing bottled water, and sometimes you don't get stopped there, you start uh, producing uh, water dispenser uh, uh, bottle and, and water content inside. So this is a market opportunity that somebody wants to take. And sometimes people expand to get a competitive advantage over rivals. Some people who expand, uh, grow their business to gain a competitive advantage over rivals. You don't wait because your competitor is not doing it and you want to grow, you want to expand your product line, you want to introduce a new product or service delivery so that you age your competitor. Maybe you identify new need of customers that nobody's providing, your, even your competitor is not providing. And then you want to you, you grow so that you start providing those uh, business services or products so that you can win the, in the marketplace. So some people uh, grow their business to win increase market share yeah, before they are not there and now they are there. For example, Boa, Boa, 
boy is moving into uh, into oil now uh, he was into uh, he's into uh, uh, consumable goods you know sugar flour and uh, cement and now he's going into oil as well so we've seen IRS, you know, into it started with airline and it is gone into rice and pests. So uh, people uh, grow their business in order, in order to win increased market share. Types of business growth. There are there's internal and there's external growth. So let's take the internal growth. As the name implies, internal means from within, expansion from within the farm. That's internal growth. For example, the owners, you know, contribute more capital or plug back profits into the business to acquire new assets, employ more staff, build additional plants, or deploy new technology. Internal growth. They didn't seek for money from outside. Instead, they, they plug back their profits and contribute more capital. And they buy machinery, one. Acquire new assets, employ more staff, and what this means is, by the time you buy more machine, expand new assets, and buy additional machines and more employees, it means your, your, your production will increase. And so that when you produce more, you do more marketing. And when you do more marketing, you do more selling. And when you do more selling, you make more revenue. And when you make more revenue, you become a very big company. And you continue to expand or grow. So, and that is internal growth. What about external growth? External growth is seeking external funding, finance, or by a merger or acquisition. So, people seeking external support. For example, you're doing your business and you don't have much money and you go to for public offer, sell shares. Or you go to a bank and borrow money, seek for a loan so that you can buy all these machineries. And this in this time, this case, you are not investing your profit or contributing money internally. So you are seeking external funding in order to buy all those machineries like it's obtained in the, in the case of internal growth. So external funding to employ more staff and to buy new plants, all from external funding. And sometimes mergers and acquisitions. So when it comes to merger and acquisition, uh, uh, it means you go and talk to another company so that we can put head together to start producing a unique product. We've seen in the banking industry in Nigeria, we've seen a lot of people, uh, a lot of banks merging together. That's seeking external growth. And recently, uh, uh, we, we've seen merger between, uh, we've seen either is it a merger or acquisition between uh, Diamond Bank and and access bank and, and recent and yesterday i had another merger between uh, takeover of union bank by uh, one bank i cannot remember exactly the name is taken over union bank because the bank so this merger is is very strategic or acquisition is very strategic at times you're going to see a bank uh, in the case of Standard Trust Bank and UBA, Standard Trust Bank it has a lot of retail customers, while UBA has had a lot of branches. So when when they come up together, and and and, 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 and they put up their resources together and their, their strength, UBA with a, a branch network and and Standard Trust with uh, customer volume, and they put it together so they are everywhere, and that's why UBA is everywhere now. And, and the same thing will happen in the case of the Union Bank because the bank is not very popular and Union Bank is very popular everywhere. All the government staff, all pensioners are in the Union Bank. So because of merger now, they are everywhere. Uh, recently, we've seen a lot of, you know, uh, integration even into telecom company, sorry, the uh, electronics company, LGTV and Hisense. Uh, I don't know it's, if it's a merger or acquisition, but then it's some, some arrangement in between. So, so when, when there's this situation, when you borrow money, when you, when you sell shares, and when you merge or acquire a company, what happened to the structure of the company? Something happened. The MD might, uh, might, might be the MD, but some of the directors might lose their, their position because it will change the ownership structure. Because you are seeking somebody's money, somebody is bringing his money into the company, and it means yeah, you need a stake. 
So, and therefore, in this type of uh, uh, business growth, uh, the structure of ownership usually changes. So, growth. So, when you look at this, uh, we're breaking down the, those type of growth from external, external or integrated growth. You're going to see merger, acquisition, joint venture, and strategic alliance. So, in the case of LG and Hisense, I feel it's a strategic alliance because each of them is still producing their independent products. So they are coming together to produce some unique features. We've seen this type of case when in, in, in time, uh, when Sony Ericsson, a strategic alliance happened between Sony co company, Sony phone company and Ericsson company. So when they, when they, 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 they match strategic, strategic alliance and they will produce Sony Ericsson phone, if you can remember. So a typical example of the strategic alliance uh, joint venture, you know, coming together of more than 20 people to put their head together and resources, and that's external growth. What about internal, which is intensive growth? It has to do with expansion, modernization, and diversification of business from within. So all this uh, uh, just an expansion of the types of bu uh, business growth. Way to business growth. These are ways, simpler ways that will take companies or businesses to, to grow, to becoming a, a, a grown business. One, build sales phone. You need to improve your sales if you really want to grow. The second one is you need to utilize a customer management system. What does that mean is the, to build a customer relationship management. You need to know your customers, you need to make them happy, you need to follow them after a sale, uh, even if it means home delivery, even if it means if they have complaint, you attend to them anytime, any, anyhow. So the next one is you research the competition. You need to know about your competitor. What does he do? What does he not do? What is he trying to do? And what is he planning to do? What are the strategies? What are the machineries? Who are his marketing forces? Uh, what is his my penetration strategy? Uh, is he offering discount to people to buy from him? All this information is very important. If you really want to grow your business, you need to learn, you need to search about your competitor. And you need to create a customer loyalty program. Loyalty program in such a way that you grant award to customers that are really buying product for the number of years. You give them discount, you award them, you show it on TV, on newspapers and dailies. And you make everyone to see them on social media that this is a local customer. And you need to identify, the fifth step is you need to identify new opportunities. If you really want to grow your business, because opportunities are coming every day and they are coming and they are going. So as a business, uh, you don't just close your store or shop and just say, oh, I'm done. And then it decides for any opportunity again. So we've seen the companies that are going to so many. Uh, uh, recently, we have issues uh, in the market. Uh, Complex and Kellogg's. NASCO Complex and Kellogg's. Uh, it, it's really happening now because if you look around your market, you can't see Kellogg's. You, know, you can't see NASCO Complex and Kellogg's taking over. We've seen similar cases in the case of Bl uh, Blue Seal Vaseline. At the time, it disappeared from the market. So all this information, uh, people uh, as business people, we need to be searching. And the sixth step is to build an email list. What does that mean? Is to build a database, not necessarily email, a database, phone contacts of your customers, and so that you can follow up. If you don't see them tomorrow, you don't see them next tomorrow. It means you need to follow up to ask. And if there's you're introducing new product, you just communicate to them easily. So you need to form strategic partnership with those that you feel your suppliers or people in the same market. So when you form a strategic partnership, some information will help you. You have to liberate on global uh, platform, meaning that you, you can go online, you can be everywhere, you can go internationally. It's another way to grow your business. So licensing deals, you can grant some people license. If you don't have the, if you are not the one, you can seek for somebody license to operate or produce certain product they produce in another country or in another uh, geographical location. Step 10, you consider a franchise model. What do we mean by franchise is allowing somebody to, to use your model. Uh, I heard some people are saying that Rafael Ego is granting, uh, I'm not sure, but then people I heard people saying that he's granting franchise as well. And that's why everywhere, by within short time, they are everywhere. In the case of Coca-Cola, for example, Coca-Cola uh, is using franchise because the owners of Coca-Cola in Kano are not the owners of Coca-Cola in Kaduna.
uh, they are using somebody the, 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 the real original owner is somewhere in another country and now they are making it and don't be surprised pop cola will start granting franchise uh, for any individual who wants to open his own company using pop cola model so they can grant and you will be surprised to see pop cola in lagos pop cola everywhere step 11 is you need to diversify your, your offer lineup what does that mean you need to diversify the way you produce uh, the way you sell your products and and, and offer to customer and uh, step two, 12 you need to build passive income stream was the uh, and uh, step 13 you need to acquire other businesses smaller business that you feel you need them to ginger up is another way to grow your business and 14 you you go international expansion and as step 15 you create a webinar where you can uh, dish out you can talk to people about your product where people will listen and a small video where you can share some knowledge with people your customers strategies for growing business for business growth is one expanding product line or service offering so expanding product line means you you're producing say indomie for example uh, you have indomie hungry man indomie so many products along the line of in, indomie and or maybe you introduce indomie indomie pasta spaghetti or macaroni so it's another product line expansion so uh, uh product line or service offering expand expanding product line or service offering is serving the existing market or discovering an entirely new market eg and go take group and go take group you know uh, they started uh, and, and now they're into oil they're into cement they're into uh, sugar they're into so many things so opening new branches or division is another strategy for growing your business e.g. Uza Suya for example you started with one uh, branch and now the branch is everywhere in Kano is everywhere in the country Habib Yogurt you can see branches everywhere Kabuga and the rest of them you're going to see Habib Yogurt Abuja everywhere so another uh, uh, strategy is to start exporting your product from your uh, mother country to another country market customer test you know by exporting you know this it means uh, you're going to enter a new market you're going to see new customer test you might be in a country where they like too much sugar and it means in your habib yogurt or rufaida yogurt you're going to put more sugar and the competition you're going to see a lot of competitors in another country and knowledge uh, are now global so so people are aware of every everything no knowledge is hidden everywhere so exporting is another strategy and innovation you know continue changing is very important in business if you really want to grow you need to be innovative meaning that in changing products increasing features we've seen the case of apple you know we've seen the case of samsung phone s1 s2 s3 they they, they make their the existing product obsolete iphone 13 when when when, when they, they they is launch it means iphone 12 is obsolete Samsung Galaxy S20, it, when it was launched, it means Samsung Galaxy 19, 18 are obsolete. So innovation is very important in business. Innovation is very important. So when you want to really grow, it's a growth strategy by innovation. So creating and maintaining online presence, and that is going global. So creating and maintaining online presence is another strategy. And now thanks, thanks to COVID-19, uh, which has brought us to the new normal and that is why even this lecture is online so we've never imagined before now that we will be holding this class online but now we are we are on it so people are selling through using whatsapp using instagram using uh, so many medium of online medium what email facebook and every social media people sell now so going online is another strategy if you want to go places and, and that's why people are and uh, whatsapp has realized that and now it has launched whatsapp business so that for you to explore it another strategy is franchising and licensing franchising is allowing somebody to use your model for example mr biggs in Kano, and the example i said of coca-cola the mr biggs in Kano and mr biggs uh, in kaduna the owners are different so franchising is granting somebody uh, your business permit to use your business model 
uh, to operate your business while licensing is permitting him to produce something uh, uh, would uh, allow him to produce it in a, in a different location not not like franchising franchising you are involved into the modeling but uh, licensing you are granting him permit for certain number of years to operate while franchising is a contractual agreement that you allow the franchise both of them uh, attracts uh, royalty to the original owner of the business the the next strategy is margin acquisition Margin acquisition, like we discussed it in the, in the previous slide, uh, is coming together of two companies to op operate and blend their models into one so that they can operate. We've seen it in Habib and Platinum Bank in Nigeria, and that's what they call the Platinum Habib Bank. And now it's down to Keystone Bank. We've seen it in the case of Unity Bank, where nine banks match together to become Unity Bank. We've seen it in the case of Oceanic and 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 in an access bank uh, oceanic is, was taken over by access bank we've seen it in the case of access bank and diamond bank some people are saying it's merger and some people are saying it's take over taken over and that's why the access the the diamond bank's name went, went on that so in the merger situation the merger you you might see the name two names appearing like in the case of platinum habib bank uh like in the case of uh which, which which of this bank I've actually forgotten. So 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 what acquisition is the the acquirer now his name surface. Uh, we've seen a lot of that in in the Nigerian banking industry. So competition competition is that colla collaboration between competitors to or other companies or competitors to create new value. E.g. Sony Ericsson the example I gave you in previous slide, a Lexus car. So Sony Ericsson. They are, and Sonia and Ericsson are competitors before and now they put it together to produce a unique product. They call it Sony Ericsson. We've seen in the case of Lexus, Lexus car, uh, Toyota company and Honda came together to produce Lexus car. And now we are seeing one, you know, uh, LG TV and Hisense TV are producing LG Hisense TV. Uh, this growth strategies we if you further break it into two internal growth strategy and external growth strategy you see in the internal is new product development other product related strategies international expansion so external growth strategy has to do with mergers and acquisition licensing strategic alliance and joint venture and then franchising all these are external growth strategies what is affecting business growth one customer loyalty uh, 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 is very important uh, if you lose losing customer loyalty there's no way uh, like i mentioned earlier again using technology technology is very important yeah you need to imbibe the latest technology in the, your operation so that you can in, uh, you can improve yourselves and improve um, inject efficiencies into your operations yeah so employee training is very important. Your customer, uh, sorry, uh, your sales persons, your Dex people need to be trained so that they, they need to be acquainted on how to handle the situations, how to handle the customers peacefully. And, and the next another factor is social responsibility. So wherever you are operating your business, you need to give back to the society where you are located. Meaning that building bridges, building roads, painting schools and centers for students and community is very important and leadership you need to build leadership uh, capacity so that you'll be able to manage and put all the resources together and put them and forge them towards the growth of your business challenges of growing a business in nigeria and around uh, around the world even though there are there might be difference between it's in the individual countries but uh, the focus is on nigeria this time so lack of coherent economic empowerment policy is a serious problem even though this current government is trying to improve uh, the ease of doing business in Nigeria, but then uh, some of its policies are stringent. So it's the, people are finding it very difficult. A lot of tax increase in VAT and so many factors, you know, is blocking people to, to grow their business. And there's this multiple taxation challenge where you, you open in federal government, tax people will chase you. A state government will chase you local government will chase you and and don't be surprised what what 
what people can decide to pay you, to chase you for tax. So paying multiple tax, all this economic uh, environment policy, uh, uh, economic policy is uh, really affecting, you know, people uh, going their business. Technical constraint, lack of enough and competent vocational centers in the country. People know where people to go and uh, acquire skills. Uh, and in Tango now, uh, there are, we have farm center and Kano and so many other places. But access to those people and people don't, the awareness to even, even access them uh, is not there. So people don't know. So deteriorating economic condition, which has to do with uh, inflation and so many factors. Uh, uh, low per income earner, so uh, GDP issues and, and the rest of government, fiscal policy and economic policy. So lack of productive culture. A lot of us, uh, we want to make it, but we, nobody wants to suffer. I always borrow this word from two phases. Say everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. And before you go to heaven, you must die. So lack of productive culture, you can't just sleep and be lazy and you think these things could work for you. And in this part of the world, you're going to see people not opening their shop until around 12 p.m. in the day. And sometimes they don't even open it at all. And sometimes in the early morning, you want to buy groceries, you'll be looking for shops to buy as, as early as 6.30 or 7. All the shops around uh, are locked down. So you, there is no way you can find access. So this lack of productive culture, we want to easy come, easy go. You don't want to make it, but you don't want to work. And people want to, once, once you make it today, you will relax tomorrow until when you eat all the, the gaining before to, uh, you come up and uh, open shop. And that reminds me, I visited a garage and a mechanic, I fixed my car, so and I, we promised that I could come tomorrow, tomorrow for another, for, for, for for another fixture and, and, and the guy refused to show up the following morning when I asked they said if this guy make money today for sure he will not come to shop tomorrow and and, and, and it's very unfortunate so when you have this uh, 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 this culture of work culture or business culture and it's going to affect your business growth so weak investment climate and doing business indicators uh, low access to finance Poor infrastructure, low access to business development services, and low access to a foreign direct investment is really affecting, you know, the uh, overall, you know, uh, you know, business growth in Nigeria. Critical success factors for growing a business: one, you have to have a clear clarity of vision, mission, and values. What is vision? Vision, you have the aspiration, what you want to become, in, uh, your business. If you don't have any goal, you don't have any vision. You don't. You just start business. Just starting it. You don't know where you are. You are heading to. It's another. Uh, it's, it's, it's very important for you to understand how to climb the, the ladder, how to uh, to get there. And you have to develop a mission. How do you get there? That's your mission. And what are the values that you build on? So you have to build competence, meaning that you don't just start the business because you see people doing it. You have to build the competence. You have to go and acquire the skills. You have to ask the expertise. You have to acquire the experts, go for training, seek for knowledge, read magazines, listen to news about businesses, go to those people doing the business and learn from them before you start any business. And the next one is develop reputation. Develop a reputation, you have to be trustworthy. You have to be promise keeping, keeper. Whatever you promise people, you have to meet it. What about really the resilience? You have to be resilient. Uh, today you can make profit, tomorrow you can make loss. And tomorrow you might not get customers, next tomorrow you might not get customers, but uh, if you choose to close the shop and that's the end. Resilience means you have to endure, you have to persevere, you have to keep on moving. Yeah, today not good, tomorrow not good, it means uh, just be hopeful that tomorrow could be good. So you have to be creative, uh, innovation, you have to be creative in the way you do your business. If you really want to grow, you have to be creative. And you have to ensure concentration. Some people jump here, jump there, jump there. Before they master this trade, they want to jump into the next trade. Before they master this trade, they want to join, jump into the next one. And then you have to be courageous. Courageous in the sense that you have to be bold. You have to be courageous to talk to people. You have to be courageous to invest and seek for fun or for uh, investors to venture into your business, to sell your product. You have to talk to people, you have to communicate, you have to go to the market, you have to learn so many courage. Yes. And learning from failure, and moving on. You have to, failure is not the end of the world. Once you can start business today and the business might fail 
And then it doesn't mean in the end of the world, you have to learn from the mistakes. What are the mistakes? What are the causes of my failure? And then you correct them again, against next time. And then you pull on and then you move on. So you have to buy financial discipline. Financial discipline means <coughs> don't live above your income. That's what it means. <coughs> don't be dipping down in and taking money. You have to pay yourself salary. You have to create difference between ownership of the money, business money, and you. Meaning that you cannot just dip down in, dip your hands anytime and take money. Whatever amount you're taking from the business, you have to borrow it, write it down so that whenever you get the money, you put it back. <coughs> and then you have to invest in people. <coughs> Investing in people, it means building a relationship, training people. You have to invest in people and, and it means uh, you have to build a relationship with people. You have, you have to uh, build a relationship with people. If you, the people you have, you have to build their capacity so that you, could, uh, you can't do everything alone. It means you, know, you need to trust people. You need to uh, get people to trust you so that they could partner with you. Even your employees, you, you need to trust them. You need to build their capacity. You need to train them to show them how to do certain things well. And that will help you. So, and, and that brings us to the conclusion. It's on some, uh, just uh, some few statements. Some people, you know, inherently drive satisfaction from being excellent in what they do. They tend to have insatiable desire to grow and positively affect the world around them. Older people tend to be comfortable with average results, while others are easy come, easy go. I know majority of us are easy come, easy go. They will just start the business and just be waiting. They will not do any effort. They will not learn new skills. They will not learn and, and talk about their product. They, can, they cannot market it. They cannot sell it. They just wait for luck to come and, and, and that's it. So, and this type of people, they are easy go, easy go. So remember, if you are that type of person that remember that even the world is not static, it means things will happen. New tech challenges every day, new customer needs every day. New competitors are coming into the market, new government policy every day. Businesses must grow in order to overcome them. It all depends on you. So thank you for listening. If you, there, there, there are any issues, you can reach me through my email. You can talk to me through the portal. And if uh, any question, any observation, and thank you for listening.